Welcome to Chatufa TV Productions. Chatufa TV Productions, connecting you to the world. Family, I welcome you once again to the show. Welcome to Chatufa Television Production. Welcome to your channel. For those that are meeting us for the very first time, subscribe to this channel, like, and also hit the bell so you can continue to receive uh, notification each time that we are live. This is the channel of the freedom of the Zimbabwean people. We are here declaring freedom over Zimbabwe because the time for the liberation of our nation has come. We are definitely going slowly, slowly towards the day that we are going to have a joyous shout across the whole nation of Zimbabwe, shouting for the fall of ZANPF as we shall celebrate the fall of Pharaoh because God is in it and God is moving right to bring solution to the Zimbabwean people and the Zimbabwean problems. Today, we continue to look at ZANPF in panic. We continue to look at ZANPF missing the point we continue to see ZANU-PF failing in many, many things, as today also we look at uh, um, Emerson Mnangagwa appealing for aid from NGOs in the Western countries as the drought has hit the nation at seriously, seriously extreme levels. And it is very, very amazing. Just imagine that out of all people, Mnangagwa uh, turning again to the NGOs in uh, Western countries, for assistance because the country has been hard hit by a uh, uh, serious uh, drought. You remember uh, in the last shows, we once talked about how they are importing uh, NG GMO maize from South Africa and uh, the battle that uh, Martin Yarari has been having with the Grain Millers Association where you are saying some of the GMOs that are being brought into the country are, are prone to give uh, uh, people or to make people Zimbabweans to develop cancer uh, and uh, it has been a battle and uh, they've been going through the courts and uh, finally I understand Martin Yarari was finally silenced because ZANU-PF they do understand that uh, indeed the issue that he was bringing up was uh, an issue that really held water but ZANU-PF would want to do anything that benefits them as long as it benefits them even if it would kill all Zimbabweans they don't care about it Oh, do we have a government? We don't have a government. Do we have leaders in Zimbabwe? We don't have leaders at all. We have a mafia government. We have uh, murderers and thieves. We have heartless people that have taken power over our government in Zimbabwe. And this is why we continue to experience these very unfortunate incidences happening in the country. Right. We would want to look at uh, an article that I have here and we would want to be discussing on what ZANPF has said to the people of Zimbabwe in the past and what they have happened, or what they said also before the crisis has actually hit the nation. So this is the state of the disaster. This is where the country is right now as we speak. We are seeing 80% of the country, uh, it received uh, normal rainfall. Uh, and then uh, Zimbabwe faces 680,000 metric tons of grain deficit. 2.7 million people face food insecurity in Zimbabwe. And the government appeals for US $2 billion assistance. Just imagine, US $2 billion is what Mnangagwa is asking for. And I can tell you, uh, this could be an exaggerated figure because obviously they would want to have money that they steal out of this. I don't think $2 billion will be really the, a, 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 you know, a, a, re, a realistic figure when it comes to the aid that is really needed. But they do know that NGOs are there, generous people are there out, out there in the world, who, especially when it comes to disasters, they really take out money without thinking twice. So ZANPEF would also want to benefit there. I can tell you there could be half a billion there, which is going to end up in Mnangagwa's pockets and uh, other people that are around him. So these are the people that we have. And when you look at it, it is so amazing that... Uh, just the one, the one last minute, Mnangagwa is coming out in the clean to start to talk about the situation on the ground and really coming out realistically, 
telling the world what has happened to Zimbabwe. While they have been in denial, we've seen George Jaramba, we've seen Nick Mangwana, we've seen all the other Marrakashis. Towards the end of last year and even the beginning of the year, they have been denying that the country is going to uh, fall into a disaster of lack of food. They've been refusing and they've been talking about the successes in the from foods that they've been talking about successes in the in the winter wheat crop and things like that but only to start to see that uh now we are having winter uh, i mean uh, wheat being uh, imported from uh, russia and you remember what they said this was uh, uh, tuesday 19 march <laughs> 2024 and just imagine just imagine just imagine you could it, this is just less than a month ago and the herald was writing that Zim is to harvest 1 million tons of grain. Just imagine such kind of, you know, embarrassing, embarrassing propaganda. You know, ZANU-PF is just a mess, I tell you. These people have no shame. They don't have shame whatsoever. You know, when you see ZANU-PF saying anything, I'm telling you, three quarters of what they will be saying is a lie. And I'm telling you, these are people that are a disaster to any nation. When you have a government that lies to this extent, I'm telling you, it's a disaster. Imagine if Zimbabwe was uh, like these other countries that usually experience uh, these natural disasters like uh, volcanoes or like, uh, you know, these, uh, these other mighty winds that, uh, that, that happen at times, the hurricanes. Imagine if these disasters would be happening in Zimbabwe. I'm telling you, uh, most of the countries that experience this, they... Their, their weather department, department of weather, they can check and see that, okay, uh, this mighty wind is going to be experienced from this day to that day or from this moment to that moment. And they give warnings already to other uh, areas that will be affected. I'm telling you, had it been ZAN PF, if they would think that it can jeopardize their votes or their political standing, I'm telling you, they could even be lying to say, ah, there's no volcano or there, there, there is no. Uh, 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 such mighty winds that are coming, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lie. It's not there. And only to realize that it would come and destroy uh, people's lives. ZANU-PF can lie to the point that the nation can be left at a very critical moment of life and death. But as long as they are using their propaganda to continue to you know, uh, paint up a picture that protects them or that puts them in a, a, a safe position, they don't care what happens to the citizens at the end of the day. I'm telling you, hurricanes would destroy Zimbabwe, while ZANPF would refuse that there is nothing like that that is coming. So such kind of propaganda, where, where when it's used in situations that have uh, uh, that are of life and death to a nation, you know, it is the highest level of irresponsibility that any leadership could ever have. You can't you can't be dicing with people's lives. When you know that a nation, the nation is likely to, fa to face drought and hunger, and you continue to, uh, uh, you know, propagate pro your, your propaganda for the sake of political expedience at the expense of the lives of Zimbabwean people, these people are a disaster to Zimbabwe. I'm telling you, ZANU PF is a curse to the Zimbabwean people. ZANU PF is a disaster to the Zimbabwean people. We are not safe as citizens in Zimbabwe when we have a government that can lie to such a level, to such an extent, that is just, you know, inhuman. Because when we talk about issues that affect the poor, that affect the defenseless, the government must learn to be honest. The government must learn to come out clean. Today, they are blaming uh, the, this situation on El Nino. So why were they lying in the, in the past? Why were they lying? If it is a natural disaster, Okay, so why were they lying at one point that the country is enough uh, grain, is enough food, food sub supply until the next uh, season? I don't understand it. I'm failing to understand. Because today, if you are saying it is not our fault as government, it is the fault of the natural disaster. Why did they lie when they were taking out all that information? Why didn't they just say it as it was? No, because of this natural disaster, we are going to experience this problem and that problem. And you'd wonder what happens in the heads of ZANPF people. And today we are seeing Mnangagwa coming out, now clean to the whole world, and appealing to the very Western countries that they, 
They always call uh, imperialist countries. We have nothing to do with those countries. I'm telling you, those countries that they love, that they call their all weather friends, they don't come through when disasters like this strike. You don't see them. You don't see countries like China. You don't see Brazil. You don't see uh, 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 Russia coming through when Belarus coming through when they have disasters like this. It is only the Western countries that will come up. Those are the Western countries that they are bashing every day whenever they are sitting before cameras. They bash Western countries. Mnangagwa recently, you remember we were talking about this issue where he deported the US aid officials. The very people that are bringing food into Zimbabwe are the people that Mnangagwa just deported just last month or some weeks ago. And today he is coming back now to appeal to those same people. What is wrong with these people? You know, we are, we are led by crazy, crazy guys. These people are just, they are bonkers. I don't, I think they are sick in their heads. You can't have the people who speak blue today and tomorrow they speak white. Today they indicate left and, 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 and they turn right. What kind of a government is this? You know, ZANPF, we just need to have ZANPF gone. If Zimbabwe is going to be any better, if Zimbabweans are going to be safe, in Zimbabwe and even outside, we don't just need to have ZANPF close by anywhere. These people are a disaster already. Before disaster strikes Zimbabwe, the first disaster that we have already is ZANPF. I want us to just hear what Mnangagwa had to say as he's appealing. And, and just imagine, no shame, no shame at all to come out clean. And I don't even know why he was waiting all along from, from announcing this. They are taking money, him and Wik Nojivayo are busy buying cars. Nagagwa is buying car, new, new cars for, for, for chiefs. They are spending a lot of money over nothing, using money for useless things. And yet they know that they are supposed to be buying food for the country. All the money that they've squandered, you buying cars for chiefs, when chiefs have cars already. And all these monies that uh, Chifayo is splashing around and, uh, and uh, uh, all these guys, Vana, Vana Scott, Saku Kwanya, uh, they are millionaires for what? They are gold mafias for what? Mnangagwa is siphoning millions and millions of US dollars every month in corrupt, in the corrupt activities. But he, can, he cannot take the money that he's stealing and say, okay, now that the country has been hit by a disaster, let's have two or three months of not looting, we take that money and we plant it into, we plow it into the nation and use it maybe to, to import food for the citizens of Zimbabwe. He still does not want, he would rather have money coming from America, coming from Britain, bring money and save Zimbabweans. The money that we are stealing from Zimbabweans is ours. We can't use it to feed them. This, this is the kind of heart that these witches have. When I'm always telling you, family, that we are led by witches. This is exactly what we are talking about. A witch would smile when they see you die. A witch would, would feel joy in their heart as somebody is kicking their last kick about to die. A witch would celebrate. This is exactly what is happening. Zimbabweans are facing starvation. But ZANU-PF, they have bags and bags and bags of US dollars that they are siphoning, that they are stealing from our minerals and from the government, and they have it stashed somewhere, but they would rather never take out even a single bag to say, let's use one bag or, or, or of our our US dollars that we have stolen, at least to order food for Zimbabweans to, to, to find food in the country. They don't they can't do that. They can't do that. Just imagine. And he has the guts to stand before the whole world and say we are starving. We need food, we need two billion US dollars in food aid. And it is it is sad. And you know these countries will end up just doing it because they just feel for the Zimbabwean people. Otherwise, they were supposed to be asking the Munangagwa, where are you putting all the monies that are coming from the mines? Where, where is that money going? Why can't that money buy food for Zimbabwean citizens? But it can't happen. I just want us to listen to what he had to say. By this declaration, I also call upon all Zimbabweans of goodwill, including those in the diaspora, the international community. Just imagine, before we even go further, Today is a day that Mnangagwa remembers that there are Zimbabweans in the diaspora. When Zimbabweans in the, in the diaspora are talking about uh, uh, their voting rights, Mnangagwa refuses them 
the voting rights. They are not citizens. You remember what Mugabe once said? Mugabe once said, Zimbabweans that we know are in Zimbabwe. Those that are outside Zimbabwe, we don't know them. They once said that. And today you want to appeal to Zimbabweans in the diaspora. You remember that there are Zimbabweans in the diaspora. And yet you can't give them their rights. Zimbabweans in the diaspora still are having problems with passports right now. The issue of passports. Nagagwa still wants people to come to Zimbabwe for passports. Instead of just flashing all passport making machines in all these, these um, uh, offices, the, all the, 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 the consulate offices, so that they can provide one day service of passports there. And those passports should just be issued to Zimbabwean people. All other national, nationals, they, they, they can get passports in all the countries that they are from their embassies. But in Zimbabwe, you still be told that those forms still have to be taken to Zimbabwe. For what? For what reason? Just to make life difficult for Zimbabwean citizens. But when now they are in a corner now, they don't know what to do. They are cornered. This is now the time that they remember that we still have a citizen, our citizens that can come in or chip in and assist because it has to save them. Now it's a situation of saving face. It's saving them. They want somebody to come to you know rescue them because they are facing a, a crisis that could lead to their collapse now they are appealing to the zimbabwean citizens that are in the diaspora what kind of witchcraft is that including those in the diaspora the international community united nations agencies development and humanitarian partners right this is exactly what we are saying remember zanu pf is busy with their BVO bill, that bill that they are trying to stop NGOs from operating. They, are want, they want to shut down NGOs. They are busy politicking. They are saying NGOs are, are change, uh, regime change uh, agenda institutions, and they want to stop them because they just want to continue oppressing Zimbabweans without any international organizations that could be watching what is happening in Zimbabwe. Although those international organizations could be in Zimbabwe for other reasons, other than politics. But they know that obviously those guys, they can take information and uh, submit it to their, to their own uh, uh, current countries of origin. And Mnangagwa does not want the world to see the way he's treating Zimbabweans, the way he's abducting and killing Zimbabweans. That's why he's against NGOs. NGOs also, they are distributing food and they are distributing whatever uh, facilities that they are giving to the nation of Zimbabwe. And in the process, they educate citizens. And Mnangagwa does not want the citizens that are educated, that are knowledgeable. He wants the dunderheads that he can continue to, to, to press down and to downtrod until they, don't, they, they, they can't help themselves. This is why you are finding he's refusing to authorize Starlink in Zimbabwe. And right now, we are seeing people in Zimbabwe are not accessing internet because Mnangagwa is refusing to allow companies that can provide cheap, effective and uh, modern day technology in terms of uh, service provision, provision in, in internet. He's refusing for selfish reasons because he knows that the, when the nation becomes informed, all these propagandas of theirs, what like the propaganda that we were seeing right now of, of that Herald newspaper on 19 March, saying that tons of metric tons are, are going to be, uh, of wheat are going to be harvested. When just weeks after that, he's appealing to the international world for food. The international world that you are always lambasting and you are always bashing and you call them a regime change uh, 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 agents. It is, it is so embarrassing. I wonder where shame is with these people. They have no shame, you know. These are the kind of people that would lead a nation to prosperity. And this is what makes our country to be a laughing stock. Because, you know, out of the whole of the 40, 16 million Zimbabweans, other nations will be saying, is this the best man that you have chosen to become your president? Remember, there are other nations that don't even believe that these guys are not voted for. We, we, had, we had many, many occasions where we were explaining to foreigners, we were asking during the time of Mugabe, we were asking us, why do you continue voting for Mugabe, you guys, and you complain about him? And we would tell them, no, 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 no. Mugabe is not voted by anybody. Mugabe does not win elections. They'll say, but now why is it that during elections he comes out victorious? Because the rigging things and the rigging machinery and systems that are employed in Zimbabwe, they are not there in other countries. So other countries, they don't know how it's done. 
they will be wondering how come you see because they will be having normal systems so this is the thing so the whole world will be saying is this the best zimbabwean that you all zimbabweans with your education and your sophisticatedness if found to be the man who can lead you this man who flip flops who yesterday says the other thing and today says the other who yesterday was deporting the very same people that is appealing to today to bring food to the nation why didn't he think about that before he deported those people that this country is already facing drought because the issue we are talking about here is less than a month ago but they knew already the situation of the grain in the in the country why didn't they stop that politicking or didn't they just stop their vindictiveness of trying to revenge for the new sanctions that america brought and he just find, found himself being vindictive and, def, and uh, uh, deporting those individuals from USAID. And today you want the same USAID to bring metric tons and two million or two billion worth of food into Zimbabwe. Does that make sense? These people want to see Zimbabweans dead. These people, they, they think Zimbabweans are some, uh, some animals that live in the bush. The only people who are, are, are human beings, 100% in Zimbabwe, are themselves. They're and the rest of us Zimbabweans, we are nothing. We can as well die in the bush. Nobody cares about us. We are orphaned when it comes to government and leadership in Zimbabwe. Shame. International financial institutions, the private sector, churches and other faith-based organizations, as well as individuals to generously donate towards ameliorating this state of national disaster. You see? You want other people who are not yourselves to donate towards national national disaster. Where is the money that belongs to government? We want to hear that government is pledged so much towards food alleviation. But right now, he's coming like Mtuli Nube with an empty bowl, a begging bowl. Like what Mtuli Nube came to do in parliament with, with his witchcraft budget, where he came with no allocation of funds, but rather he came with measures of taxation to tax money even more from the poor Zimbabweans. This is the same thing. Mnangagwa is appealing for help from the international community, yet his government has not declared even a cent that they are saying we have put so much towards alleviation of uh, the food alleviation uh, exercise. Nothing. You don't have anything on the table. You want 100% everything to come outside from outside countries and from well-wishers and also from Zimbabweans. That you don't respect. Just imagine this is a case of a president. This is this is this is in Shona they call it Munyama. When we have people like this, I'm telling you, we need new leaders. We definitely, definitely new leaders, need new leaders in Zimbabwe. Because these people are a danger to humanity. Zanu PF are a danger to humanity. Any day Zimbabweans can wake up all dead because of these people. I'm telling you. And if we don't continue to stand up and to rise up against this government of Mnangagwa, we are going to all perish in Zimbabwe. This is why we are saying we need freedom from these people. Zimbabwe needs to be free from these hooligans. Zimbabwe needs to be freed from these witches. Zimbabwe needs to be freed from these sons of the devil. How can they want to watch Zimbabweans die of starvation? 2.7 million people is not a joke. And they are talking about 2.7 million. Already that number is far above that. Far above that. People that really need food aid in Zimbabwe are much more than whatever number that could be talk, uh, spoken about right now. And it is said for a country that is 90, 90, 90 point something percent uh, unemployment, and then it suffers food shortages again. It automatically means the little food that comes in will be very expensive. And then what kind of a country would have people failing to buy their basic, uh, their, their, their basic food? If, they are, if, if, if we fail to buy our staple food in a country, then is that a country? A nation should not be able, should not suffer to to uh, to have its citizens. I mean, uh, citizens of a nation should not fail to buy their own uh, 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 natural food that they eat every day. It's not it's, uh, how how can how can that work? How can that work? The staple food of a country. 
is a staple food is food that we must find you know filled the or filling all the beans people being able to eat it and throw away but today we are talking about families that can't even afford to have just a bowl of meal of milli meal in Zimbabwe, a bowl of milli meal. That's why ZANU PF has been giving people in the rural areas a cup of maize, of maize seeds. Just imagine a cup, one cup, and the whole village is lined up by some ZANU PF big wigs who have big stomachs, and they are giving people just a single cup. What do you do with a cup of maize, which can't even enter the grinding mill? And they are saying we have given people. Uh, 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 the, the villagers uh, some food aid. That's what they are talking about. It's so sad. Very, very sad. Zimbabwe needs freedom from ZANU-PF. And we, united as citizens, we continue to call upon the freedom of the Zimbabwean people. We continue to call that ZANU-PF must fall. We continue to say Mnangagwa and his government must collapse. Otherwise, Z Zimbabweans will perish. We really need people that have hearts in their chests. These guys, they don't have hearts in their chest. I'm telling you, they don't have empathy. They don't have sympathy whatsoever in their hearts. We are led by vampires. We need human beings. We need normal people in Zimbabwe who can run that country. Truthfulness would have helped. You don't lie the whole three quarters of the year, lying that there's excessive food for political reason. And then the last minute, you start to shout out that there is totally nothing to eat in the country. What kind of people are you? You know, these ZANPF people, God is going to judge ZANPF people harshly. I'm telling you, the hell, I'm, 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 the kind of hell that is supposed to be for ZANPF must be a different hell from the rest of the other people that go to hell. Because these are devils that are walking on foot every day upon the, the surface of Zimbabwe. And this is why, citizens, we are saying we need to continue as intercessors to pray for this nation. This nation is covered in a dark cloud. And the nation definitely needs people that rise up and stand up, people that go on their knees to pray. Let us pray for our nation. Let us pray for freedom. Let us pray for peace. Let us pray for change. Let us pray for the blue movement. Let us pray for leaders that fear the Lord, leaders that will lead according to the will of God over the nation of Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe will come out of these doldrums. We are sick and tired of ZANPF. We are sick and tired of Mnangago. And we are not meeting our words. We want ZANPF to go like yesterday. Mnangago must fall like yesterday. And the signs we are seeing them, already we are seeing the confusion, we are seeing the, uh, the, the panic, we are seeing the helplessness of ZANPF in situations that they are facing right now. It is a sign that God is on the move. God is in it. And I am telling you, family, God is not going to, 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 to miss this time. He's not going to, 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 to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. We are definitely going to see the freedom of our nation because we have suffered for so long. Zimbabweans have suffered for so long. And the time for rest has come. And this is the season of rest. God is bringing rest to the Zimbabwean people and we are going to see the enemy of the Zimbabwean people collapsing in this season because the time has come. We need to continue to pray. We need to continue to intercede. And God will grant us the desires of our hearts. Definitely the freedom is coming and God is in it. So family, I would want to hear what others are saying uh, concerning the issue that we are talking about here. It is a very painful issue. It is really uh, you know, something that really is devastating for our country to continue to see uh, people like Nangagwa joking with the lives of people. Uh, Eva about says, it is a joke for really. He wants help from the West. What a shame. And, uh, and joking with people's lives is not, is, you know, it's just something that no normal human being should ever do. Well, this is the issue of life and death. Elijah Mabosa says, thank you, Chatufa, for giving us good news. Watching from Mo Mozambique. Thank you so much, my brother. We really appreciate your support. Gogo Stole says, whatever is donated to Zimbabwe, the beneficiary will primarily be ZANPF members and the rest of the citizens, non-ZANPF members, will have to buy it, most probably in US dollars. Exactly. This is what they do. This is why I was saying even that figure is exaggerated. You'll find that almost the other billion will disappear into ZANPF pockets. Zibusiso says that 
uh, good evening uh, family together we shall celebrate definitely celebration is coming a day is coming that that we are going to see ed uh, totally totally collapsed because god is moving slowly slowly bringing freedom to zimbabwe brother nation mashamba how are you my brother says evening chatufa how is that uh, uh we are now hit by hunger when these people are saying we have enough reserves to the next harvest time that was propaganda they were lying like as always sun pf is always lying Whatever that they say, you take it with a pinch of salt. They are bloody liars. The Shelly case is so embarrassing. The once bread basket of Africa is now begging stupidity at all highest levels. I'm telling you, by now, Zimbabwe should have developed into some sophisticated irrigation systems. By now, as the bread basket of Africa, we are supposed to be now plowing our, you know, our crops at a highly, highly sophisticated uh, system that even when the rains from above don't come, we will still have systems that can irrigate and we can still produce bumper harvests. But we have got a foolish leadership and a stupid government. This government does not have people at heart. Only God will stretch his hand. Bless our beloved country. The time is now. Thank you very much, my brother. Indeed, the time is now. Time has come and it is moving to make sure that we see the end of ZANU-PF. It's a shame. Uh, anyway, it's a sign that God is in it. Yes, it is. Indeed, it is a, 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 a sign that God is in it. Uh, Enias Nilop says, you nailed it, uh, witchcraft budget. I'm telling you, that, <laughs> that was a serious witchcraft budget of just, of just coming to milk money from the people instead of bringing money to the people. Chamber Maposa says, when donations come, they steal them and give them in a partisan manner. Indeed, uh, we need to be freed. Uh, we must continue to pray, pray for the freedom of our nation. Elias says, two billion as they give away hundreds of thousands worth of cars. Ah, Tanet, ah, we are so tired. Very, very tired of these people. Voni says, Van Varukufa, guys, things have to change. Definitely, things have to change. We need to see things changing. Our cheaper cows like ZCC, a million dollars. Just imagine if that million dollars had been put into buying food for the starving nation, it could have gone a long, long way. What is the reason for bringing green bombers and donating money to all out leaders? That's the stupidity of ZPF. This is why we are saying we are not a normal country. We need normal leaders in the country and we need to continue praying for God to manifest the change that he has spoken about for this season. Uh, Brother John says, those Zanpif, um, um, a, a, a rotten, uh, huh? uh, I can't read what he said. We say, busy giving motor, uh, they are going, they are going, yes, I, now. you can see that they are clueless. They don't know what to do. All the situations that they are facing, just wait to see what is going to be happening on, on Friday if they are going to be introducing that stupid currency of theirs in the monetary policy that they are supposed to give. That's where you will see that these guys are crazy and they are clueless and they don't know what to do anymore. And this is just marking the end of ZANU-PF as we continue to pray. Family, I want to appreciate you for joining me on the show. I want us to pray. We just have to pray for... Uh, the starving nation of Zimbabwe, that may God bring uh, uh, or touch the hearts of the world for people out there to just be generous enough and donate towards the Zimbabwean people so that we don't have people uh, dying out of hunger. So let us pray for God to provide for our country through those that are generous. Mighty Jehovah, in the name of Jesus, we pray and we believe and we thank you that you shall continue to touch hearts all over the world generous enough to bring food to our country. Zimbabwe needs food. Zimbabwe is starving. But we know that, oh God, you are God who will stretch forth your hand and make sure that you shall feed the hungry citizens of Zimbabwe through the generous people that are all over the world. Touch the hearts of many countries, many citizens of the world to generously donate so that Zimbabwe can be fed. Zimbabwe has no leaders. Zimbabwe has no government. The government that we are trusting is the government of heaven that will cause people of, gen of generous hearts to bring in food to save Zimbabwe. F Father, we thank you for we know that we will never starve, we will never die, for God is watching over his nation and over his people. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray amen and amen. Otherwise, family, thank you very much for joining me on the show. I really appreciate your support. Uh, for those that are supporting us, as always, please, don donors, continue to donate to the channel, the Watchman and Center, the gmail.com. Go, come to that email and then we can discuss on your donation. No donation is small. 
you might think it is small but it would go, go a long way in changing uh the studio somebody sent twenty dollars at one point from america that twenty dollars was able to buy an extra mic that we need in the in the studio so never underestimate your donation and also uh that uh, that uh, black join button that you see uh, under the video there uh, if you uh, click on it it will take you to stages of membership please join the membership we want as many members who are going to be members of Chatufa Television Production and Chatufa Television Foundation. And we want to see uh, the support that you can give so that we take the vision uh, um, further. This is the vision from heaven and it is supposed to prosper through those that hear the Lord and through those that are of generous hearts. Thank you so much for being with me. Till we shall meet again in the next show. Tomorrow, we shall be together once again. Remain blessed, family. We love you. We love you as always. Shalom.